Lamoni. And he's a long, long time, uh, for, we support him for a long time in the missionary field. And uh, it's good to have him here. And uh, we appreciate his efforts and time that he puts toward mission work. Uh, and during this period of time, he's going to have an interaction between us. And so if you get any questions or comments or, or whatever, he, he would appreciate that to uh, interact with him. And uh, I'll just turn it over to you. And you got 45 minutes. Or plus or minus. Well, good morning, everybody. It's it's a joy to be here again this morning. And, you know, this year has been quite the year, hasn't it? With COVID and everything, it's made it rather difficult to do a lot of things we want to do. And we didn't get to go on some of the trips we wanted to go on. But let's see, where's the clicker for this? I'm sure. Right on. I think we're ready to go. Well, maybe. Where did I point it at? Up there. Aha. There we go. Anyway, the first trip we went on this year, like I was saying, COVID made this year pretty difficult in a lot of ways. But it, it did give my wife and I a little bit of a break, which was kind of nice and kind of needed. And, you know, we have done mission work for years and haven't had much time off. So a little bit of time off was good. But after a certain point, it's like, I want to go back to work. I'm tired of this. So we worked hard trying to find places to go this summer. In, in the country, and I'll show you that in a little bit. But before COVID started, we got invited to go to Alaska in February, and COVID was just getting started, and you know at that time, so we kind of watched it on TV what was going on, and by the time it was time to return, we wasn't sure we was going to get back home, the way things was going, but we made it. But this is my granddaughter Cassidy. This is her first mission trip to be able to go without her parents anywhere. And she got to go with us. So it was a lot of fun to take her and watch her. And you know, I've talked about a lot in the past about how we need to involve the young ones at a young age in the mission work. And that's what we try to do with our own family, our grandkids. Our next, next one to go is gonna be Matthew. We're gonna take him. He's about two years younger than her. Okay, we went to Homer. We did a gospel meeting. We um, were invited by Brad. This is Brad Harib. He was asked to come up there to do a um, presentation, a, a several day presentation, like he does at a lot of places. And it was a good time to spend with Brad, but it was also a good time to work in Homer. The elders knew we were coming didn't know exactly what we were going to be doing. And they were a little surprised on some of the things we did. My wife did teach classes and we did a lot of door knocking in weather where it was rather chilly. And we was, it was snowing. One day it was so cold that it, we were anxious to get back to the car just to warm up. I mean, my hands were turning numb and stuff, but we were still out there working. That's the main thing, we kept working. Uh, this is the congregation there, Homer, and there's a few visitors here, but that's the size of the congregation. I didn't even really know, remember how many numbers there was there, but it was a good congregation. They're working hard, and they are struggling like everybody else, and of course, this was before COVID really hit. Actually, if you get down to it, COVID never hit Alaska much at all until just the last, last six months. And like I was telling some, I went up to 
I went up to Alaska and I went moose hunting with my friends again. My last opportunity probably to get to go, that's why I went. I didn't realize it when I landed and got in the car with Paul that he had COVID. He thought he just had allergies. Well, he has allergies a lot, so I didn't think nothing of it. Well, as the week progressed, his symptoms got different and I was paying attention to it. And I told him about halfway through the hunting trip, you've got COVID. He says, no, I don't have COVID. Well, then Stacy got sick with it. And then another one got sick with it, but I didn't get sick with it. I'd had it and I'd had my own natural immunity system that, so I never did get it. But we got back to Wasilla and I was supposed to do a report at Wasilla. It got canceled because of the fact that I was exposed and they didn't want me to come to the congregation. So I flew home, which, you know, I probably should have tested before I left, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to get stuck in Alaska. So I wore a mask, I come home and I immediately tested and I was negative. I never got it and I never got sick or anything. So I was happy about that, but I did have a good time with them. Didn't see no moose, of course, that's normal. But that wasn't what, always why I go for. I go for the time to be with them. Here it is. Here's Diane teaching classes. Um, they weren't expecting all this at first whenever we first started talking with them. Jake Collins goes with me to Jamaica. He goes on other mission trips with me. He's from there. Now, he's moved back down to the lower 48 now. But he knew he was going to be doing this, so he got everything set up for us to be there and knew he was going to be door knocking and stuff and everything but diane she taught these kids took all the kids out of the audience and took them into a room so that the parents could pay attention to what was being taught by brad and i don't remember the subject he taught now it's been too long almost a year so but anyway and this like i said was cassie's first trip she got to help grandma teach class and she done a really good job now she was so excited about going on this trip that she made a whole bunch of teaching. I call them teaching aids. You can call them crafts, whatever you want to call them. But she made a whole bunch of them herself, three different kinds, three different ones. And she made about 20, 25 of each to take with her. And she brought, presented them to the class herself. You know, she's done this before. We've went on mission trips. She couldn't go on to Jamaica and to Costa Rica. And she would make things for us to take to these mission trips. That's how excited about going to being in, involved with mission work that she is. She does this. She loves doing it. And I love seeing her do it and the excitement on her face. And she had a blast her first time going to Alaska on a mission trip. Here's Doubt Door Knocking, Brad and Cassidy. And then I'm in another picture. Um, but we went door to door every day. Didn't make no difference what the weather was. We were there for, for four days, able to work for four days. And that's what we did. Okay. And Cassie, of course, she makes friends everywhere she goes. She made, another, made a little friend in the congregation that was there. We actually was door knocking in their neighborhood. You know us, it's snow on Cassie's coat. Well, that was a day that it was so cold that you couldn't hardly stand to be out in the air in the wind because there was a breeze too. But we still door knocked and we set up several studies for them while we was there. I'm having trouble with Eric. Oops, too far. Okay. We conducted several Bible studies while I was there. And some of those Bible studies continued on after we were there. Um, the elders were really surprised that they that we found Bible studies because I'm not sure that they've done a lot of door knocking in Homer. I would like to take a campaign back there again sometime. And I've been in the process of talking with them some about it, and I probably will take a group back up there to work there. But just for a, a note that I'm now that I'm thinking of it, we used to go to Seward all the time. Okay. Stacy. He's the one that still goes to Seward and takes care of the congregation. And I got to talking with him and he wants to build a, a room on the back of the church building next summer, next spring. He's going to start it. 
and he's asked us to come up and help him. And he wants me to bring two or three people. If anybody's interested, let me know. It'd be a nice trip to Seward. And it's just gonna be a small room. It's gonna be a bedroom, kitchenette, and area with a bathroom and shower. It's not very big, but it's about a, about a week's job. We could probably have most of it done if anybody's interested. But that's another trip I'm thinking about trying to go on. And I told him, I actually told him I would be there one way or another. You know, of course, school's kind of a problem anymore. They don't have enough drivers like everywhere. Every time I take off, I hear a lot of moaning and groaning, but I don't care. I don't have to have the job. So I do it because I like doing it. There we go. This is a radio station. It's up on the top of the world. It broadcasts into Russia. It broadcasts into China. It's a shortwave type setup. I don't understand it all. Maybe you guys know more about it than I do, but it's the first time I was ever in it. I've been close to it several times, but I've never been in the building. It's amazing what, what's inside there, all the stuff, all the instruments, all the tubes. Some of them tubes are huge and they, uh, they broadcast all over the world, basically, from the top. And, it, and because of where it's setting, the antenna, I had a picture of it, and I wish I'd put it on. It's huge. I've never seen anything like it before. It's amazing. And it's a, it's a great work that they're doing up there. And the Homer congregation's involved in this, along with a lot of other congregations down here that supports it. Hey, the, I've got to go to Mexico. Any questions about Alaska before I go? Anybody have any questions? Uh, to Alaska? It was just Brad, me and Diane and Cassidy on that one because I was invited by Brad to go up to Alaska and that we didn't take a big group of that because of the situation. It was a little bit different, but, but we went up there for that. Any other questions? Okay, the, the only trip that we actually got to go on after COVID is this trip, unfortunately. I tried real hard to get to go to West Monroe, Louisiana. We, were, we tried to do it in January because we couldn't go to Jamaica. Jamaica situation is, is pretty hard to deal with right now. Every time I've talked to Carson, which I talk to him all the time on the phone, I ask him, Kim, what, what's the situation like? Well, we have to test to go into this, to go into Jamaica, which isn't a problem. The problem is we have to test to get out of Jamaica, to come back to the States. The U.S. government expects us to test. Well, you were relying on a system down there. The medical system isn't very good. You're going to be easy to be test positive. And if you're test positive, you're stuck in a motel room that they tell you to stay in for two weeks. Then if you test positive again, you're there for two more weeks at your expense. That's why we can't go. And there for quite a while, they couldn't have any more than 12 people in their building, you know, and, it, and then that changed and then they went back to it. Right now they're shut down again. They, they can't, they're not allowed to have very many people. They ignore it to a certain point but they come to a point with Brother Carson that if he had more than 12 people, they were going to come and take him and put him in jail. It's a whole nother, whole nother situation in these countries than what we're used to. You got to remember there are socialist type countries and they're, it's just different. Their medical care is not as good. Uh, Jamaica's lost two members from their congregation from COVID. It's hard. It's hard for them, but it's also hard for us to be able to go. And Mexico or Costa Rica, I'll go into that in a little bit more about it, but it's even worse there in the situation. And I tried real hard to set it up that, that Brother Wayne, me, and John Griffin would go to, co to Jamaica and fly from Jamaica to Costa Rica and in the middle of the summer, we want, I want to do that. I worked and worked and worked trying to get that set up, but we never could find a time that we could do it because of the situation. 
And I thought if we could just us three go down and spend some time with the members and the preachers and encourage them. That is something they needed. They needed it really bad this summer. But we, we were shut off. We couldn't do it. So the situation is, is hard to deal with in, the, in those countries. But we did get to go to Mexico. We got to do door knocking. We got to do Bible studies, preaching, kids classes and teen classes. And we had a lot of visitors. Now I'll go through this and show you. I flew into San Diego. We went to Baja, California, Mexico. Oh boy, you remember the big races they have, the Baja races? Yeah, it was going on when I was there. It ended right where we were at. And I watched them once in a while pull off the road and up there to load up. That was all I seen of it, other than dust. But that's where we were, in, were at. Uh, Zapita is where we went. That's where we worked, okay? It was, it was an experience to go to that part of Mexico and never been there. And it was a, we had a good time and it was a good trip. I flew into San Diego on Southwest, first time on Southwest, pretty good flight, except for the person sitting beside me. They said, get that mask up, keep that on your nose. And then she didn't want to talk to me, didn't want to have anything to do with me. That was a long trip with her, but that's what you deal with on airplanes. And of course I was sat in the middle seat, so it was hard to take pictures. So I couldn't, this is the only pictures I was able to get as we was landing in San Diego. The first thing we did when we got there is we, we drove down, crossed the border, no problem. I got to see that really nice border fence that, that uh, was put up and it really looked nice for when we crossed and everything. We had the fellowship at the motel. They invited a lot of, now this wasn't our trip. I was going with somebody else again. We got invited to go on this trip, but it, we, but Wayne and I, I'll explain how that happened. John, which is the guy in the blue shirt, just kind of half picture of him, was the one that invited us. Uh, his congregation is Wayne's brother's congregation, Wayne Burr's brother's congregation. Uh, he's an elder there. And he was asked to go and speak and do the preaching at this congregation. Wayne called me and he told me what was up. He says, would you like to go and help me do evangelistic work? He says, and we can check this out, this workout, the area out, and maybe we can get some trips there and start doing our own mission trips there. So that's the reason I went. I went to check out the work, do some evangelistic work while I was there and to plan for the future, which we have now set up a date for February and we're going back and we're taking our own group, okay? But anyway, we had a lot of Mexican brethren there um, from that congregation and we, they fed them. I wasn't responsible for it, some of these things that went on, which is fine. We would do it different, but this is how they did it, which is fine. This is a food that was prepared for us sometimes for supper and lunch and the Mexican food, I love it, it's really good. This is a church building at Zapita. The building's on the right, the classrooms are on the left, and half of that was a room that we had for the teenage class, half of it was for the younger kids. I was expecting five kids, just so you know, I was expecting five kids to teach. I prepared for 10. This uh, is the sign. The reason why the sign's not matted out on the street is because of the taxes and some things like that. And the building's not owned by the church. It is given to the church by one of the members of the congregation that allowed them to tear the whole inside of it out and make it into a space for a church building, but it's still considered a house, a home. So I don't understand their tax system. I don't understand why all that, but that's the reason why the sign is not out where everybody can see it all the time. They put it inside after services, and put it out on Sundays and Wednesdays. This is the team that went. The girl in the red shirt and the girl with the blue jacket were two members, two uh, uh, Mexicans we picked up halfway from the border. Remember where I, there was that circle in that one town? That's where we stopped and picked them up. Wayne put out that we needed somebody 
that could come and help translate the classes. So, and help translate so that we could uh, do Bible studies and stuff or go out on the street. So these two young ladies contacted us. Wayne did not know them, just knew the congregations they come from. And they joined up with our team. That's how he does. He gets people all the time from that can translate for us when we go on these teams. And this is how he finds them. The young lady on the my left, the your left, I guess, um, with the blue jacket on, other blue jacket. Her name's Gabby. And she was my translator on the Bible studies or on the door knocking part of it. And the guy in the middle, he's the, the leader of the group. He's the one that prepared all this trip. Um, this is, of course, Wayne and I, this man in the black shirt, I'll have more about him, but he's a very faithful member of the congregation there. And he's got a lot, rather large family that are all Christians, and I'll show you that in a little bit. This is preparing the door knock. They, like always, we get brochures together, we put everything together, get ready to, to go out, and then we go out and have the material hand be ready to go. This is my door knocking team. Gabby was the one that, that could speak English. The others could speak a little bit of English. Um, I got to know them all very well. The lady in the back is the preacher's wife. The two girls in front are their granddaughters. All members, strong members of the church and work hard there doing the work. And again, this is Gabby, my translator. I worked with her for only two hours on that trip, on that door knocking tip. We only got to go door knocking one time, but there's a reason I'll show you. <clears throat> we set up five Bible studies, five in two hours. Think about that. Five Bible studies in two hours. All five of those Bible studies are active Bible studies today. And I think one of them's already been baptized. The work we did in those two hours, we set up five Bible studies and looked at the fruit of the labor. I wish we could have done, got to go out more. But see, we went to do the evangelistic work. The others went to do other things. They weren't involved. So it was just Wayne and I going out and doing this. And Wayne went to a whole different section, different section of town. I don't even know how many studies he had. They had some too. This is a Bible study right here that we went to. Uh, this lady quit coming and her husband quit coming to church because of COVID. And just like a lot of others, I don't know whether you've had that here or not, but we had a hard time getting people to come back to Davis City because of COVID. Some of them just said they weren't going to come back till the whole congregation was vaccinated. But they eventually did anyway and come back. But that's what the situation here. She had just started coming back before we got there. So Wayne had a study with her study with her for about an hour and a half about being faithful and and with her husband too that's her husband there after you know mexican brother and they're wonderful every time you're at their house they want to feed you you get so tired of eating it gets over it, it's overdone sometimes she made handmade homemade tortillas fix this up with potatoes and vegetables and you put inside them and and eat them and corn tortillas i don't like corn tortillas but i ate them anyway that's what you have to do and then she informed me that she was making all of them for the whole congregation all the evening meals and she did and she can't hardly walk across the floor but yet she still stood there and did that uh, these two ladies young girls uh, obeyed the gospel after our Bible study. Now, I know that they come to church, but they obeyed the gospel, and they hadn't. They'd been held back for some reason, but they chose to go ahead and obey the gospel after we studied with them. The one standing beside me, how old do you think she is? Somebody say. 12, 15? Anybody else? You're not right yet. <laughs> 18. Look how short she is. That's just the, you know, that little girl there goes out every day in the sun. And you know, 
It's not as hot there. That's one thing about Baja, Mexico. It's not as hot as it is in regular Mexico. You can pick strawberries all day. Probably some of the strawberries you get from Mexico, you, she probably picked for you. Again, works all days, all day long. Her sister works at a, at a store somewhere. I'm not sure where. And she was two, she's 16. So but I thought that was interesting. I thought, you know, and then the thing is, is after we studied with them, there's going forward and being to be baptized. And we went out to a little pool about 45 minutes from the church building to baptize them. We had a follow-up Bible study, and I did the follow-up Bible study. Um, the preacher, I gave him our Jamaica booklet. I'm taking more time this morning. I know I am. But our preacher, or the preacher there, I give him one of our Jamaica study guides that we have translated into Spanish. And he was looking through it. And he wanted us to do a follow-up Bible study with him. And I said, I'll be glad to. I said, what would you like me to talk on? He says, lesson two. And it was on the baptism. He wanted them to really totally understand what they did. So we studied for, for, for an hour and a half on, on that lesson two. And it was a real good study. Unfortunately, the one that had to pick strawberries had to go to work. So she wasn't there. But the preacher really liked that study guide. And that's what he's using now after he's seen what I was using and how well it worked, he, he really loved it. And that's what he's using to study with people now. This is the man I was telling you about that was in that one picture. The guy sitting there in the chair is 95 years old. He became a Christian when he was younger. And as a result of him becoming a Christian, look at who all is Christians there. Four generations, the girl in the middle, that's her little baby. And she married his son, which is not in the picture because he's at work. There's some really faithful, strong Christians in Mexico. Oops. This is the gospel meeting. Uh, I had my class first, and they had a class over there. And immediately after their class was done, Wayne had to be over there to start preaching. That was hard. I only had 30 minutes. You know, I, 30 minutes is nothing. You need more time than that to teach class. But I managed to get through it. Here's Wayne preaching. He preached all the lessons while he's there. That was their, the reason he went to start with. But he also translated all my classes, just so you understand. I had him as my translator in um, teaching class. Here's my class. Look how big it is. I was expecting five. And that was the first day. They love this material. I get this off the internet. You can find lessons that match what you're teaching. And it has lots of different, you know, word searches and different things like that. Kids don't get these things as much down there. Um, and they love it. I'll show you some pictures there and we'll keep moving. There's my class, look at that. You know how many I end up with? 22 kids. So after the first lesson, which I did have enough material for the first one, I had to go to the motel and I say, can you give me copies? And I bought copies every day until I run them out of paper on the weekend. And we had to go find someplace else to get copies for me that night. But I was tickled to death to have that size of class. And one thing I want to point out, in that class when I was teaching, you could hear a pin drop. They're that respectful. They're that respectful, these kids are. And they want to learn. They were glued to what I was saying. That's why I said I wish the class could have been longer. I didn't have enough time to do everything. I sent the, the uh, class or teaching aides home with them, and they did them home. Finally, I just didn't have enough. So I had to, I just give them to the two girls, which one of them sat in there. But anyway. I gave them to the two girls and they were to use them in their own class and do them so that they would have benefit of them. This is the younger class, which is that building's in half and this is the other side. They weren't expecting very many either. So my wife was glad she didn't went 
didn't go because she wouldn't have not liked not knowing how many was going to be there to start with. She likes to make up plenty of stuff. And, and I was kept telling her over messenger what was happening and she couldn't believe it that I had that many. This is just some of the countryside. I'm just going to show you. This was actually traveling back. That's homes that people live in. And that's why, see what their goal was, they brought, they would stop at Costco in that one town that was circled on the map in the middle and they bought food. So what they do is they take food out to the families that are in need and they spend time with them, encourage them and things like that. That's the only thing they do. And whenever, whenever we got done with this trip and he said, this is sad to tell you this. He says, we've been coming here for 20 years and you and Wayne did more evangelistic work in, in three days, four days than we do have done in 20 years. And that, I was kind of like, why don't you do it? And it's not that hard, but they don't. That's not what they go for. They go for to feed them, buy food, encourage them. They don't even preach. And that's the reason why they wanted Wayne to go. They thought they'd add that to it this time. So it's, it's different. Different groups are different. And I'm not condemning them. I'm just saying, you know, they could continue to grow. Because that's, see, that's what we've done with our team. We learn. Every time we go, we learn something new. And then we make that change so we're better for the next year. And the next year, we make more changes. And we see something don't work. We don't. We redo it and do it different. But our team continuously is changing so that we can do more work and accomplish more. That's why we get so much accomplished in the week when we're down in Jamaica and, and different areas. This is just getting prepared to go out door to door. I've got this slide in the wrong place, sorry. Gift from the church and I eat some of it, but I give most of it to my grandkids, which is nice. Now I'm gonna talk a little bit about the work of David City. And this is gonna go along with my lesson a little bit this morning. We do, we're doing Bible studies. That's one thing that since Ben's I was home, I concentrated so much more, my wife did, on the local work. And that's what we've spent so much time from the time COVID started till now. And also I think COVID has actually opened the door because people are starting to look. People are wanting something. And as a result, we have 18 Bible studies going on right now at Davis City. 18 active Bible studies. A congregation of 20 people, we have 18 Bible studies every week. And it's hard to keep up with. Now you know why I can't get all my farm work done. This is Albert. We sent him to preaching school two years ago. He graduated in June. When he come home, I don't know whether God was waiting for that moment or what, but I think the floodgate just opened because from then on, we had all these Bible studies just increased, increased in numbers. Davis City is my home, my congregation where I go. Yeah, from Lamona, you go east on 69, you go into Davis City, it's about four or five miles. And that's where we worship, that's about 20 miles from home. But we got Bible studies, Mount Air, north of me, we got Bible studies up here at Carlisle. We've got Bible studies, Corden. You know, we're traveling a lot. And it's not just me and my wife. It's Albert and others. Uh, OC folks go with, with Albert to come up here to Carlisle. So, you know, but we've got 18 active Bible studies. And we've had two baptisms in the last three months. So it can be done. And like I said, it's, a, it's an ongoing thing that's, that people are looking. People are looking. I'll get into that more later. But and then we have an all-day meeting. And I, I know you probably, some of you, yes, somebody. The one, I'm, one of them I'm doing up in Mount Air. I'm not going to mention who or anything. I had a lady call me from Georgia and said, I have a relative I've been working with when I come up. Could you study with him? And she's a member of the church. I said, yeah. So, and I'll tell more about it. And in, in how, I, how I set that up was I called him 
and he was very reluctant, reluctant to talk to me. And I invited him out to lunch, which I used as a key, as a way to get to him. Others is my wife does uh, Bible studies, which I may show, I won't be able to show it here, but she does a uh, ladies Bible class on Tuesday. The members were coming to it. It's at one of the areas where they, some of the ladies live in, in a uh, low income area. They have a community building. She started using that. And she ended up having some of the members invite friends. And then other members, some of those friends liked the class, they invited their friends. She has five ladies coming from the community now. And one of them just started this last week. Um, we've had uh, just different members. That's, that's what it, it takes everybody. It doesn't take me, it takes everybody. You have uh, different members that know somebody and they start talking to them and invite them and find that interest. And then a Bible study gets developed. Some of it is like I said, you'll be studying with somebody and their friend, they'll have a friend, they'll be there when you come, maybe visit or, and you would say, well, why don't you just sit down with us? And sometimes they will, sometimes they won't. And, you know, we're doing some of the studies as we're doing in the public library in Lamona. I mean, that it's just, it's everybody working together. It's not one person doing it. Everybody has to be involved in some way to find people. That's how you do it. And that's what I'm going to talk about in the lesson this morning. So did that answer your question? Any other questions? But it's, it's. It's not hard to set up Bible studies. I'm, I'm getting into my lesson, so I better go on. Um, the all-day meeting, I'm going back up here. We usually have, we've been doing this for over 100 years. Obviously not me. I'm not that old. But we've been, this congregation has been doing this for over 100 years now. And last time we had it, we had 22 congregations come. We had 120 people there. This year we had 55 and 11 congregations because of COVID. Last year we had to cancel it because we couldn't even have it. But, but it's been, everybody that come just really enjoys it and are really happy that we continue to do it. Eric, my son spoke at it. I'm gonna go through this fairly fast and I'm out of time. Unless you can see some of the crowd. Um, we had uh, three different states represented here. And then Diane, she went to Bible camp. camp. Eric uh, is a director of a Bible camp down by Sedeo, Missouri. And so Diane, she did the crafts. This is one of her crafts she, she did. You know how many Home Depots I went to to get those paint sticks? I even did it in Tennessee. But I finally got enough and she, the kids painted them and they wrote their own stuff on it and decorated them. They loved it. And I don't know, there was more. And then I've already kind of talked a little bit about Jamaica, what's going on there, Brother Carson, and all the different things he's had to deal with. One of the things I didn't mention to him, to, to you, is he's teaching now at the, the uh, Kingston School of Preaching. And he teaches once a week when he can get down there. And the hurricane that went through the recently done a lot of damage to it. And they're looking for help to get that done. He asked me to come down and, and do the work. And, and I called Brian, uh, somebody I can't think from Tennessee that I worked with. And, and through him, we were finding some funding for him just to send down to have contractors fix the roofs and structural damage to the school. That's what we're doing. And I talked to him all the time on the phone through Messenger. Uh, the church is doing well. Of course, you have to have testing, and, and, and he's also trying to set up a preaching school there at Port Antonio. Uh, he's got a good supporting congregation now. Costa Rica, um, where we worked, is usually in Canyas and Upala and, and Tiloron. And right now, travel is restricted in that country. Even if we went there, we probably couldn't even travel where we want to be. Um, they're letting tourists come in in certain areas, but they're not allowing to go to other areas. 
and that's where we need to be. Um, the congregation at Tilleron struggling. I'm closest to Filio there, not a very good selfie, but they're struggling. Um, members aren't coming to church because of COVID and there's bickering a little bit between some of them. Um, he's having a hard time, so he needs prayers to the congregation for the work there. That's one reason why I wanted to go there so bad was to try to encourage him and help him and, and try to help with that situation. And it's, it's tough. They're having a hard time and, and COVID's hit a lot harder down there than it even hit here. So, um, my plans for this year, um, I'm not even gonna try to mention that, but we're going in December 7th is when we're leaving to go there. We can fly into Mexico and we can take public transportation back out of the country and don't have to test. So we can go into Mexico as many times. So I'm gonna concentrate a lot in Mexico this year till I can get back to where I can go to some of the other places. I haven't worked in Mexico a lot, but I worked with this uh, Francisco down by Mexico City. So we're gonna fly into Cortero and we're gonna be with Jaime, which is I've, I've been in his house before, lived with him for a week. And he's gonna take us over to this congregation. From there, we're gonna take public transportation back to Ciudad Victoria, where we've worked a lot of times and what you guys have been to. And we're gonna, yeah, you have too. And we're gonna to go to some different, some congregations there and some new congregations Wayne's been seeing out in the country and working with. And um, we'll spend a week, week and a half there doing that. And Baja, Mexico, we will be going back in February. The date is not set, but um, Wayne talked to Mario. Yeah, Mario is, is a preacher there. And he wanted Wayne to come and do a, um, they're gonna have a whole bunch of American preachers come down and hold a big lectureship and everything. And Wayne said to Mario, he says, I would a lot rather just come to the congregation and do that. He says, you would? I said, yeah. He says, well, then I want you to. So we set up, set it up. That's how we got it set up to where we're taking our own group now down. So we're gonna take at least a van load, maybe two van loads of people down to work the area next, next February. And then Hamilton, Montana is a place that Wayne went to this summer, met the preacher there. It's a small congregation and he's offered, offered an opportunity to go, I've been asked if we could bring a group in and, and do it, uh, do a campaign there. And he op openly said, yes. And then we're not gonna be that far from Moses Lake, uh, uh, Washington, where I've been before. So we're probably gonna swing over there and, and do a campaign also. So it'll be two campaigns there. West Monroe, Louisiana. I tried three times to go there. We are supposed to go this spring if everything works out. But it's been tough getting there because of COVID. He does? I didn't know that. That's good. Maybe I'll see. Maybe you wanna go. <laughs> so anyway. That's the plans. That's the plans for this year. In Acts chapter two, verses 24 and 20, but the word of God grew and multiplied and Barnabas and Saul returned from Jerusalem when they had fulfilled their ministry and took with them John, whose surname was Mark. You know, the more we work, the more the work's gonna grow. David City is a good example of that with the work that's going on there and how the Bible studies has just blossomed and grown. And we have so, like I said, we have 18 of them going on. So anyway, see the word of God grew and multiplied at rapid rate during the first century. The first century church was active in evangelism, which is what we have to be. And not only in the area, but in other regions and nations, the Lord work is impacted by our work and very directly impacted by the church here in Ankeny. Thank you so much for supporting us and keeping us going because if it wasn't for your support and other congregation support, we couldn't do what we're doing. And we love doing this and we want to do it, to serve God and, and, and help the church grow all over the world. And you're a big, big part of that. Thank you.
and I got done before the last bell.